nation. Well, with me now is Lloyd Msipa, who is a relative of Robert Mugabe, and Alex Magaisa, a former advisor to the opposition leader, Morgan Shangarai. Thank you for speaking to us. Sure. What was your reaction when you heard the news that he was resigning? Oh, it was like, wow. I mean, the, the family has been trying to you know, get him to stand down for a very long time, and he's been you know, pretty you know, adamant. So this moment is something else. I mean, we got our independence in uh, 1980. Today is like Freedom Day, you know. So what would he say to you when you would ask him to, to stand down? You say the family has been trying to the, get the, him to do the that. The family has been trying to get him to stand off so many years, and uh, he's just been Mugabe. Mugabe is a proud and arrogant person, and uh, he thought he could go on. He thought he was probably the anointed one. Uh, it's not just family, it's everybody, you know, members of parliament, Zimbabwe in general, and it had to come to this. And, uh, you know, shocking, you know, we, we were hoping that his legacy, you know, will be protected through a dignified exit that is not, uh, you know, pushed by the military or pushed by the people or pushed by parliament. So for us, it's, it's you know, it, it didn't have to come to this. That is the point. It didn't have to come to this. And Alex, what was your reaction? Well, you know, um, I always knew that uh, Mr. Mugabe was very stubborn, very intransigent, very single-minded. And uh, what happened uh, yesterday when he called a cabinet meeting today uh, simply demonstrated that uh, he is clearly li he was living in a, in a bubble. It was delusional because he didn't realize that people didn't like him anymore. And he thought that he could invite cabinet ministers who had actually moved a motion to impeach him. It's a great day for Zimbabwe, I think, in terms of uh, the, the likely change, you know, having had someone for 37 years in power. It was such a huge burden, and I think a lot of Zimbabweans are elated. That's why you see the scenes in Harare, and I can imagine the scenes in other cities. And, of course, out here in the diaspora, people are so happy that this day has come. We were getting to a point where we thought it would never happen during our lifetime, that he would be there forever. But uh, finally it's happened and we're happy. It has come. And, and, but technically now, who, who's in charge? Because that's an important question as well. Well, a very important uh, question. For us lawyers, matters a lot. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, if you speak to people in Zimbabwe right now, they say, we don't even care who is. What we care about is that he's gone. But, you know, technically what, who, the person who is supposed to be in charge, according to the Constitution, is the vice president who was there, uh, Vice President Mpoko. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether he's in Zimbabwe, I don't know his whereabouts at the moment. He would be the one who would take over, but up to a period of 90 days. But it could be as short as a minute, uh, depending on whether ZANU-PF is able to nominate uh, its preferred candidate, because the Constitution allows the ruling party to nominate a replacement within that period, 90-day period. So uh, the ZANU-PF MP just told us that Emerson Nangangwa was their mm -hmm. choice to take over. Is, is that constitutional well, I, at this I, point? I, I think that, uh, you know, uh, it's a foregone conclusion that Mr. Nangangwa is going to be... But is it a constitutional... Uh, yes, it would be constitutional because, like I said, ZANU-PF, the ruling party, is allowed to nominate a replacement. And if they nominate Mr. Nangangwa, as we all expect, he will be the one who is going to take charge. Well, it's interesting you both painted a picture of one man against a whole nation. How yes. was a 93-year-old able to stay in this position for so long? Uh, President Mugabe had entrenched, entrenched himself so much into the national psyche, you know, with socially, legally, uh, you know, he was, he, was, he was everywhere. You know, go to any public office, you see his picture in there. So he was, he was Zimbabwe. And, uh, and I've always said, this man will not be taken away by just one single, you know, sweep. You'll have to remove him in installments because he is so entrenched. So, uh, you know, moving forward, you know, Zimbabweans now have a better chance of, uh, uh, you know, seeing Baba's legacy, hoping and praying that the history books will be generous with his legacy. And uh, that's, you know... Well, what do you think his legacy will well, be Well, you know, I mean, just, just to point out that, uh, you know, yes, Mr. Mugabe was a, an individual who had divided opinion over the years. However, we also appreciate and I believe Lloyd understands that he was the head of a system a system that he had entrenched for 37 years. And that system is not necessarily going to crumble just because Mr. Mugabe is gone. So it's a challenge for Zimbabwe to build a system that will be able to, to challenge the, the entrenched system that we have. You don't seem to now. agree. No, I think, I think the intervention by the military, you see, it, it was specific. It was to clear out the dirt, the rot, the corruption. And they've done exactly that. All the individuals that have been causing the problems in ZANU-PF uh, you know, are gone. 
So literally, ZANU-PF has democratized. So we're likely to see a new ZANU-PF going forward. Because remember, there's precedence in this. It happened in 1975 when Dabaningi Stol was the head of ZANU-PF. And at that time, we were corrupt. ZANU-PF had become corrupted like this. And uh, through the military, he was removed, and Mugabe was elevated. And uh, that was it. Th there's precedence in history. The same thing has happened now. So we now have a new culture in ZANU-PF, a culture of tolerance, a culture of, uh, of unity. So, so you think that this is the beginning of an absolutely new beginning? This everything is, will change? This everything will change. We will, there will be no more corruption. See, the police had become a, a banded unit, literally, stopping you agree? every person. Well, well, you Very know what, quickly. I, I like to be hopeful. In 1980, we had so many beautiful words from Mr. Mugabe, but things okay. turned bad. All right. And I hope it's not the same this time. Okay. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for joining me this evening.